Hi there, I'm Stephen Chu, a professor of psychology, and this is the fourth video in a four part series on helping students make the academic transition to college level work. In this video, I'm going to talk about various learning resources that are available to you and how to use them effectively. In the previous video, I talked about self regulated learning and how it can help you to avoid certain pitfalls uh, in learning. So here are the common pitfalls we went over last time, bad habits, mistaken beliefs about learning, ineffective learning strategies or confidence, which are often uh, the result of ineffective learning strategies, not studying at the proper level of, of detail, not monitoring your level of understanding uh, as you study, and not making full use of learning resources. So it's that last point that we're going to be talking about. Now, one um, way of overcoming most of these pitfalls uh, is using the uh, self-regulated learning or the cycle of, of uh, self-regulation of, of learning where you plan uh, what you're going to do, what your goals are, how you're going to accomplish them. You put that plan into, um, uh, into operation. You're monitoring your progress uh, in that plan, uh, adapting as uh, certain parts of the plan work better than others. And then the evaluation phase, you get feedback uh, about the success of your plan. Uh, if you have accomplished your goals, then you're done. If not, uh, you start the, uh, the cycle all over again, where you uh, come up with new plans and uh, based on the previous uh, uh, feedback that are more efficient and more effective than were before. Now, part of, of self-regulation learning is uh, using uh, the learning resources that are available to you, right? So we need to talk about what resources are available. So you have a wide variety of resources, learning resources available to you. Some of them are in class, some of them are outside of class. And we can think of them in terms of their accuracy or their validity about how accurate they are and also their educational value, how useful they are to you in terms of learning uh, in a way that you're expected to in your class. So let's talk about the validity the, or the accuracy and then also the educational value of each of these. So if you look on the in-class um, resources, you can see about the first six of them are generated by your professor. And these are by far the most useful uh, and the most educational resources that you should have. Your professor uh, designs the presentations around uh, uh, course goals and around course assessments. Uh, and the professor picks readings that are based on the uh, learning goals that he or she uh, sets for you. Um, and then the teacher also gives you feedback about how well uh, you are, are meeting those, those goals. So those first three are incredibly important. That's the reason why uh, developing the habit of going to class regularly is so important and also uh, making sure that you do all the assigned readings. Um, teacher feedback, uh, oftentimes students uh, don't like to look at feedback, especially if they didn't do well. Uh, that's really just hurting yourself. Uh, the feedback you get from like the previous exam is going to help you prepare for the next exam. What worked uh, in your preparation, what didn't work. Also the feedback from uh, assignments that you have will help uh, you to understand the level of understanding the professor is looking for or the focus or emphasis that the professor is looking for. So always use teacher feedback and seek out feedback if, the, if you need uh, some feedback about uh, how you're doing. The course syllabus uh, often has uh, course policies and it may list other kinds of resources available to you. So always check back with the syllabus to uh, see uh, what information it might have to help you. Then the course website on your learning management system uh, may all have other resources. So for example, I may put uh, practice exams or extra examples or supplemental instruction on the course website. Uh, so you have to uh, get in the habit of checking the website in order to find those resources. So uh, always make use of all the resources that the professor uh, provides for you. If you have questions and you're confused, then you can set up uh, a teacher meeting. Or if you just want verification of your understanding, set up a teacher meeting. Now, a lot of students uh, think that's kind of intimidating meeting with the professor or the teacher, uh, but it's absolutely your right to uh, uh, ask for a meeting and meet with that, that professor. Now, to make the most of that meeting, though, you should have a good idea of what your confusion is or what your questions uh, are. So instead of just simply going into that meeting without preparation, you should think about, you know, these are the concepts I, I'm not sure I understand. 
And you should talk about what you've done to try and solve the, uh, uh, the issue on your own. You know, the reading says this, or uh, in class you said this, but the textbook says this. So that will really help your professor uh, to structure the meeting in a way that will be most useful uh, to you. And never be afraid to just say, this is what I understand of this concept. Am I, am I getting this correct? You know, are there uh, nuances here that I'm, that I'm missing? You know, talking to your professor is the best way to make sure that your understanding is at the level of detail um, that uh, the professor wants. So uh, teacher meeting uh, can be a really valuable uh, 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 learning resource. If you have a TA in your course, uh, their TA may also be uh, helpful. Um, TAs uh, have different roles. Some TAs only grade uh, uh, exams and papers. Others are part of the course. They attend all the lectures. So whether your TA will be useful to you or not uh, it will vary depending on how involved the TA is in the class. The textbook often has a website also. Uh, and this can be uh, useful. This is maintained by the publisher oftentimes. Uh, it could be a good way of, of testing yourself, which is a, is a great learning strategy. And you can use that feedback to make sure that you're um, uh, studying at the proper level of detail and your understanding is, uh, is correct. The only thing about textbook websites maintained by the publisher is they may have a different emphasis uh, than what your professor is emphasizing in, in your course. So. Uh, always make sure that uh, you are satisfying the um, priorities and the learning goals of, uh, that your professor sets for you. Then your classmates can also be uh, a really valuable source of, of information. You can uh, share notes, you can ask them questions, and uh, if your classmates are, are like-minded and, and they are uh, also very conscientious, that can be an incredibly valuable use of, of uh, are incredibly valuable learning resource uh, for you. But of course, since they're in the course with you, they are, may suffer from the same misconceptions uh, that, that you do, uh, and uh, you can also be misled there. So uh, they are very valuable, but that's probably not the most reliable source of information that you have. Outside of class, uh, you have the Academic Success Center on your campus. Most all campuses have some sort of study skills center. If you need help, uh, with uh, uh, time um, uh, allocation, you need help with uh, uh, study strategies. Uh, Academic Success Center is a, is a great uh, uh, place to go. Uh, help with uh, effective note taking, uh, for example. Uh, they may offer tutoring. Tutoring is valuable if your uh, issue is understanding the material uh, that you just simply uh, are not able to uh, comprehend uh, the material uh, quickly enough or deeply enough, tutoring may help you. If your problem actually has to do with more study skills, then the Academic Success Center may be more helpful to you. Then there's a whole series of third-party digital resources which students tend to like because they're available, uh, they tend to be um, easy to use, uh, topical websites or, or videos uh, that are overlap with what's being offered uh, in class and maybe they're you know, they're, they're more slickly produced and maybe they're, they're faster than listening to the presentation or pre-existing like electronic uh, flashcard decks, um, things along those lines. Um, those can be questionable in terms of, of their accuracy and in terms of the depth of, um, of detail that they present. Uh, it's easy to have a, a flashy video that's too shallow a level of understanding, and that's really not going to help you in, in your preparation. Also, the priorities in those videos may not be the same priorities that your professor is testing, so that may not be helpful to you uh, uh, either. Uh, there are homework websites if you are in like a STEM class that will provide you answers to like physics and chemistry pr uh, problems. That can be useful uh, if you use it the proper way. If you just use it to get the answer, uh, and then you kind of try and work it out until you get the answer, then you haven't really learned anything and that's not gonna help you on exams. So that's really not the proper use of those kinds of homework uh, websites when it substitutes for the work that you need to do in order to master the, the concepts. If you use it to check your work after you've made every attempt to solve the problem, then that can be useful to you. Then there's existing papers you can find in paper mills. Uh, this is not your work. Uh, and oftentimes uh, this work uh, tends to be shallow or uh, of dubious uh, validity, and you've learned nothing uh, from these, and uh, you're also presenting information or presenting 
work that's not your own. So that's academically dishonest and you can get into a lot of trouble using those. Uh, so I, I think uh, those are dubious and, and should be avoided. So here's a, a table uh, that kind of summarizes uh, the validity and the educational value of the resource I just talked about. And if you're looking for the resources that are high validity and high educational value, they're the ones that uh, uh, your professor uh, uh, provides for you. Your professor uh, should have uh, very clear learning goals for the course and their teaching and their uh, exams and assessments and assignments should align with those learning goals. Right. And then you have other resources that uh, may or may not be useful uh, to you, depending um, on the situation. And you need to make sure that that what you're doing is really valuable to you. So here are some other resources that you might uh, f uh, find useful. Uh, if you're wondering about how you plan your study time, uh, here is a, uh, an activity that I created uh, with three different learning plans. And you can look at them uh, and uh, decide which plan uh, you think might be most appealing to you. And then I have a discussion afterwards about the pros and cons of each plan. Each plan assumes you have a week to prepare for an exam. And the question is, what's the best way to spend that, uh, spend that week? Uh, and there are pros and cons of each, each plan. Um, also, I have two sets of videos uh, that you might find useful in terms of studying. I've kind of alluded to ineffective study strategies of being a major problem uh, uh, that students run into. Uh, the, both these sets of videos uh, have uh, uh, explained you know, why poor study strategies are, are, are bad for you and how to study more effectively. Uh, here's a, a set of five brief videos, about seven or eight minutes each. Uh, there's an optional introductory video, but you can go directly into the five uh, videos, depending on where your interest uh, might be and uh, learn about the cognitive psychology of, of effective learning, which will help you to identify good uh, learning strategies and avoid bad ones. Then um, I have a, a 20 minute video, uh, which kind of goes over uh, much of the same material, but talks about it in terms of the choke points of learning, the, the, the natural obstacles to uh, learning that you run into and how to uh, get around them and the pitfalls in learning, the traps that students uh, uh, fall into, which undermine their learning. So you can uh, read, uh, you can watch this video and it will talk about how to uh, avoid those pitfalls and how to cope uh, with those choke points. So in summary, in this series, I've tried to explain to you that college is a new and different learning context and you have to learn to adapt to it. Uh, you have to form good habits, avoid uh, pitfalls, and ultimately, uh, what you want to do is become a good self-regulated learner. So the good news though, is that if you develop these good study strategies and you become a self-regulated learner, not only will this help you be successful in college, but it'll also be a, in, an incredible advantage to you uh, in your career. Um, this last video, we've talked about knowing the learning resources that are available to you and judging how uh, useful they are to you and how to use them. Um, so. Uh, I hope that uh, this, these set of videos have helped you to make the most of your learning opportunities, and I wish you the best uh, in your college experience.